Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl and welcome to the first vid of 2021. We can only hope that it is a better year than last year. I decided to kick things off with a desk setup tour as that's the thing that most of you guys want to see. A lot of it's actually changed from last year and you can kind of see it off to the side of me. I'm actually sitting off center on the camera just so you can get a glimpse of what the actual setup is like. We'll kind of go through everything including the furniture to the computer that kind of powers my day-to-day -day stuff here on YouTube and of course all the juicy bits of accessories. And we'll start off first with the furniture that supports the desk setup and they're from a company called Rove Concepts. They provided a ton of furniture here in the studio. They're a bit on the pricey end and if you're looking for more of a budget friendly setup, I'll leave my favorite Ikea desk link down below. But if you have the extra loot, if you've got a bit of money to spend, I've had a couple of these pieces I think now for three years. They definitely last way longer. They're a bit more minimal. I love the combo of the all white with the maple slash oak wood finish. And the main desk is actually a kitchen dining desk. I love to have oversized desk setups. That's once again, a very lucky luxury to have here in this studio because we have a ton of space. I've also got a small little side table underneath. Because I like to keep things off of the actual desk, I love to have a bit more of a minimal look, so sometimes my laptop goes there. And to finish up, up over on this side, we have some wall shelves. They're from Grove Made. They make a lot of wood accessories, so you can see it fits that same wood finish, so I think I was a bit lucky on matching the wood types. Once again, I keep them pretty bare bone, going with that minimal theme, so I've got a couple books, of course, hints of orange throughout. Have to have some sort of Lego, so I have my AT AT Walker. I have Lego all throughout my studio and my old Mac Mini, which is kind of alluding to the new desk setup which we have behind me. It's actually running off of the brand new 2020 Mac Mini and that features the new M1 chip and I actually thought between all of the Mac models that we saw this year, the Mac Mini should have won the MVP of the year. And when you think about it, those new M1 chips, I've got the entire lineup here. So we've got my MacBook Air, this has got the D-brand skin over top. This was the MacBook Pro and of course the Mac Mini behind me. They're actually running all a very similar setup. So they all have the M1 chip, they all have eight gigs of RAM. And one of the only key differences is actually the cooling system. So on the MacBook Air, we no longer have any fans and over on the MacBook Pro and Mac Mini, Thankfully, those still have that, so they help dissipate heat better. And when you actually look at the pricing, the Mac Mini starts at $699, the MacBook Air $899, and the MacBook Pro $1099. So the value is definitely there. Yes, you need to get an external monitor. Yes, you need to get some extra peripherals like your keyboard, like your mouse. A lot of people still have that. So that's the model that I've chosen for this setup. So all the stuff on this channel. So whether I'm editing YouTube videos, whether I'm editing just photos for Instagram, emailing brands, watching multimedia content, something that I think we've all done last year and I'm sure will continue into this year. The Mac mini crushes that. And I'm so surprised because my older version, which is actually over this way, this actually really struggled with any sort of video editing, mostly in that 4K space, as that's what I am shooting with. 1080p it was fine, but the new Mac Mini, the new 2020 Mac Mini, since these technically were both released this year, this one crushes 4K content. And I think if you're in the market for a brand new Mac, the Mac Mini, I think, is a solid, solid option, especially most of us are working from home nowadays and we don't need the portability of, say, a laptop. And switching now over to the monitor, which supports the Mac Mini, and this is where you're probably gonna flake me a bit because I tried to keep budget on the Mac Mini. I went overboard and went the complete different direction. It's the Apple Pro Display XDR, so the most expensive monitor that you can get for a Mac setup. So it's ridiculous, it costs $5,000, I think even $6,000, if you get the nano texture glass. I've just gone with the standard glossy and it's just one of those things where I decided to ball out on last year. The fact that I spent so much time at home, I wanted a reference monitor, something that was good. Obviously, I'm in the Apple ecosystem. I get sucked in. I'm not sponsored by Apple and if Apple you do see this, if you wanna pay me for some of my videos, I spend most of my money on your stuff anyways. It only makes sense. But to the monitor, is it overkill? Absolutely. But it's one of those things, if you start using it, it's just so much harder to go back to anything less. So it has a 6K res. It's got 1600 nits of brightness. It's built like an absolute tank. The finishing on it, the design on it is kind of next level. People call it the cheese grater, whatever you wanna call it, it is beautiful. Is it worth $5,000? 
Probably not. The fact that the stand alone costs an extra thousand bucks. The fact that that USB-C cable at the back, if you lose it, you need to replace it. Apple charges a hundred dollars for a replacement. You are paying the Apple tax, but once you've been sucked into the ecosystem, it's that black hole. It is so, so hard to leave. And it was my extra splurge of last year. It's crispy. It's good. Can I use it to its full potential? No, I make YouTube videos. On the flip side, if you are, say, in the film space, it is industry standard. It's comparable to monitors that cost 10, maybe even $12,000. And my theory was Apple technically doesn't refresh their monitor line too often. If you look at their older cinema display, I think that stuck around for close to a decade. I plan to have this monitor for close to a decade. Fingers crossed if my upgrade itch doesn't kick me in the butt. My only true regret from owning it, I actually damaged the glass, I nicked it off of a table so if we can get a close macro shot, thankfully I didn't crack the entire screen, but there is a nice chunk out of my $5,000 monitor. Insert sad face. Another thing that I can knock the display for, despite the fact it is a one cable plug and play, so straight to my Mac mini, if I wanna rock my 16 inch MacBook Pro on it, it's an easy swap. For whatever reason, it does not function outside of that Apple ecosystem. Such an Apple thing to do. For example, I've got my Xbox Series S, the next gen console sitting next to it. I cannot play that on this monitor. It's an expensive sacrifice you have to make. And like I said, for most people, if you just wanna have a one standalone monitor, I'll leave some of my other favorites down below. They're of course way cheaper, you can game on them and they're just more versatile in general. And over onto the accessories now, the Pro Display XDR is actually sitting on a bit of a riser. That is from Grove Made as well, so it matches the wood finish. Underneath, I probably have the most useful little accessory. It's the CalDigit dock. Because Apple products tend to have most of their ports at the back, like your SD card slot, like USB-C, or even a standard USB, it is so much more difficult to access them. This dock enables you to plug in your SD card, so all the footage can plug straight through there. It's a clean and minimal solution and is still made in aluminum, so it kind of still fits the overall theme and look. To my mouse and keyboard combo, I've once again kept things very minimal. We have the Keychron K1. This is the one with blue switches. I do like the tactile feedback of the switches. I know that they're a bit loud, but banging out emails all day, this does become godsend. We've once again got another little hint of orange. I think I might be slightly biased. You can see the choice for this keyboard. Over on my trackpad, I do have the standard Apple one. I do have it inside of this Grove made container. Once again, we're going for that natural wood finish. And when you are doing any sort of video editing, having a trackpad makes your life so much easier. Scrubbing through the timeline becomes a breeze. And for my mouse choice, we are rocking the Logitech MX Master 3. I swear by these mice, mouse. I love them so much that I've got one here in the studio, I've got one at home, and I probably won't upgrade until we see the MX Master 4 sometime this year. If there's anything that you grab from this video, get a good mouse. This is the one that I would recommend. Good mice. Mouse. Another dope desk accessory that I actually love, once again by Logitech, they make some pretty sweet stuff. This is called the Powered Dock, and it's actually a multi-charger for all of your tech. It is kind of suited for Apple. It's got a spot for my Apple Watch. I can charge my AirPods, and when I want, I can just stick my iPhone over on it, and it starts charging, obviously, once it's actually plugged in. And I do prefer a dock that allows your iPhone to sit upright because if I ever wanna watch extra content, if I'm watching any extra soccer off to the side, that's where I usually have it running off of. And the one thing that I will say though about my Apple Watch, so I've got the latest Series 6 here. I've got it in stainless steel with the Milanese band. I like a bit more of a premium watch. I still cannot get over the square design. I'm constantly on the hunt for a smartwatch with a circular OG design. I'm a huge, OG watch guy, that's usually why I rock mine here. And that's where I found this one. This is the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro. So the watch is still premium. It's made out of titanium with 3D glass over top. It's got a ceramic back with, of course, your heart rate monitor. The best feature by far has to be the two week battery life. And unfortunately, say on my Apple Watch, I have to charge that every single day. Just knowing that I don't have to do that for the Huawei watch makes it so much better. It can live on my wrist longer. It's just something that I typically don't have to worry about. And also because I use this a lot for my workouts. I've got a little workout studio here in 
my studio. Studio within a studio, it's a bit of inception. It actually has way more workout modes and it has one specific to strength training, which is something that I typically do. I tend to lift heavier weights. And with this watch, you can also track blood oxygen levels. So it's a great addition if you wanna use this more than a fitness watch and more into the health space. It also has all the good stuff like GPS monitoring and it's one of the first watches that you can use in five atmospheres of pressure. So technically, if you want, you could swim underwater and still listen to music if that's a priority when you're underwater. You can do it. But like I said, this is one of the better circular smartwatches and I know I'm not the only one. I've kind of seen debates over on Twitter. People are still trying to locate one. So if you're interested, links of course of every single product will be down below. And now we are switching on over to the final accessories. Audio wise, we've got the oldest things that I've had on my YouTube channel. I think I've had these close to six years now. These are the Yamaha HS7 studio monitors. So perfect for sound reproduction, listening to any sort of content, especially when I'm listening to myself when I edit for six, seven hours on end. These are the things that you wanna use. They fit the theme, they look straight dope, and I think they kind of remind me of a Stormtrooper combo, the white on black. So they are actually pretty high quality monitors, and I will slide this one back and move on to the last product. Once again, a bit of overkill, but usually I do have a headphone stand. This one is from Say Techie. The reason why I love this, it actually has the USB ports on the bottom, so in case you wanna charge up anything else on the desk, on top, we have another pair of overkill, kind of similar mantra to the Pro Display XDRs. We have the new AirPods Pro Maxes, $550 headphones. Are they worth it? Probably not. They're probably one of the better sounding headphones that I've used and I'm kind of comparing to the Sony WH-1000 Mark IVs. Those are kind of industry standards for Bluetooth headphones. Do they sound $200 better? They're probably the most premium and best built headphones that I've used, so they've got all aluminum. The adjustment bands are made out of stainless steel with a silky amount of resistance, so it feels very premium. The canopy on the top, it does allow for more breathability, but once again, is that worth 200 extra dollars? You can argue the same for the Pro Display XDR. Is it worth a thousand, two thousand dollars more? You're kind of trapped in that black hole that I was talking about. Once you've used them, it's hard to go back to anything else. I'll leave some other budget recommendations, but that is kind of the setup that I'm rocking here in 2021. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this vid and I get that a lot of this stuff is at the top end of the budget scale, but it's just some of the things that help me make these YouTube videos. And obviously I get that I'm super lucky that I do have brand relationships. I do get a lot of this stuff sent out to me, but I hope you could take some slivers of this video and implement that into your own setups in 2021. Really hoping that this year is way better than last. We've got a ton more content planned for this year, so I hope to crush it. I hope to bring you guys more videos this year in general. So stay posted to your sub boxes, sub to the channel if you already haven't, and I hope to catch the rest of you. I can now slide back to the middle of this frame in one of my next vids. Face. And the one last thing, I always forget this in any of my desk setups because once again, a lot of you ask, the chair. This is the Herman Miller M-Body. I know once again, on the very high end of the budget scale, it's around $1,500. Out of anything that I own that's premium, a chair is something that I can justify spending the extra money on. It's the piece of tech or the piece of equipment that you sit in for eight to nine hours. Do not sit in a $5 plastic chair. I know there are cheaper options. You can get a $100 $200 one from Ikea, for example. Save your back, you will not regret it. I've had this one close to, I think, five to six years, and it's pretty much brand new still, and I can expect to get another 20, 25 years in longevity out of this thing. I think it's kind of supposed to mimic a spine, so it does fit the overall theme. And now, we are officially done this video. Oh, my knees.